international surrogacy arrangements um, are, are, are not really a new phenomenon in as much as um, we have children who have been born by these arrangements who are now adults and able to speak for themselves. Having said that, of course, it's new for many states. Not all states worldwide um, accept surrogacy. There are some very legitimate reasons why a national position may be to prohibit. But we also know that there are a number of states internationally that do permit surrogacy and also have frameworks that permit intending parents who are not resident in their state to engage in a surrogacy arrangement there. And that brings challenges at the policy level. Um, uh, but what we see, again, from the comparative um, uh, research is that children who are born from surrogacy arrangements and particularly international surrogacy arrangements coming from states that prohibit surrogacy is that their rights at the moment of birth are jeopardised. And whatever one's view of surrogacy, once you have a child that is born, that child is entitled to the full gamut of protection of the Convention on the Rights of the Child and regional human rights instruments. But the risks that we see in practice relate to, well, nationality. What is the child's nationality at birth? Are they de facto or de jure stateless? Um, what um, and who are the legal parents of that child and who has parental responsibility over that child able to make decisions from the moment of birth? And lastly and fundamentally and really thanks to, uh, the, uh, uh, to Chip for uh, raising this important topic and that of identity. Child's rights to origins, um, um, how is information relating to that, that child's birth story properly collated and made available to that child? What we see, I think, from the research to date, and a lot more is needed, is that um, surrogate born children should not be discriminated in any way, shape, or form as at the moment of birth, but at the same time, states are entitled to take a view on surrogacy and take measures domestically to deter surrogacy arrangements based on their national positions. But when a child is born, that child must be protected in the same way as any other child. For as long as these arrangements do take place in states where it is entirely lawful to do so, all states need to have a regulatory framework in place. Okay? And that is a difficult policy decision for states to, to accept. But we know from a thorough application of the Convention on the Rights of the Child and multiple other regional human rights instruments that when a child is born, steps need to be taken to ensure that those rights for that child can be upheld from day one. And as I mentioned earlier, irrespective of the circumstances of their, their birth. So let me give you some practical examples there. Well, one, if it is the case that a child is born by means of surrogacy and the law of parentage of that state um, leads to the surrogate being the legal parent as at the moment of birth. States need to decide, well, is there or should there be a mechanism in place to transfer parentage post-birth to the intending parents in an ordinary and um, um, uh, relatively efficient fashion, which would involve also the surrogate mother participating in the process. If everyone's intentions remain post-birth, then there should be no reason whether by means of adoption or some other national mechanism for the intending parents to acquire legal parentage. In those states that already allow surrogacy, well, perhaps there are other means uh, to achieve um, um, uh, or to avoid limping legal parentage. And I would note, for example, the recognition of legal parentage that was established in the state of birth, okay, provided that the key factual information surrounding the circumstance of the birth are properly communicated to uh, the state of nationality of the intending, intending parents. And there are also multiplicity of concerns surrounding sale of children. Um, the regulation of intermediaries, I think, is likely to be key. We can learn from the experience in the adoption world um, that regulation does have positive, uh, positive effects. And lastly, more broadly, just education to donors, surrogate mothers and intending parents. M most of the clients that I've assisted over the years, um, as I've mentioned, surrogate born children, intending parents, surrogate mothers and donors. One of the key themes is a willingness to assist for all of the right reasons and a real wish to ensure that the relationship is transparent so that the child who was born of this wonderful, if not unique, birth circumstance 
is able to grow up knowing that there is born full of love, openness and transparency. And that requires education, the preconception, not just post-birth.